Hi, we're here with Dr. E.C. Krupp. Dr. Krupp, can you tell us the purpose of this conference and what exactly is archaeoastronomy? Archaeoastronomy is simple. It is just the study of, in a sense, ancient and prehistoric and even traditional astronomy, the unwritten record. Uh, but it's also about astronomy and culture and how people use the sky in all the aspects of their lives. Here in the American Southwest, there's plenty of evidence for this kind of thing, not only to have gone prehistorically on, but also right up into the present time. And so the people here are enthusiastic about that activity. So, so Dr. Malville, can you give us a little background on this conference and why this many people came together for archaeoastronomy? Well, I think many people are fascinated by the combination of old stones and stars and the sun, and that happens everywhere in the world. You know, Stonehenge, the pyramids, and Chaco Canyon and Mesa Verde have this, this, this compelling uh, aspect of here are some mysteries involving people's fascination with the sun and the moon and, and the stars. And, uh, so there is this combination of aesthetic beauty of these sites together with uh, with some some depth to it which is uh, which is scientific and, which is fear. and you are the director of the solstice project it's a nonprofit that i established in 1978 for research and preservation and educational work with the solstice uh, not just solstice the sun dagger but all of the expressions of astronomy in chaco canyon which are many now, you are the person who really brought the sun dagger into the national eye. Well, I just happened to come to it in 1977 when I was recording rock art in Chaco Canyon. And I came to the spiral, that beautiful large spiral with the dagger of light, right through the center near noon a week from solstice. So. I'd studied a little Mayan astronomy and knew about um, how they use shadow and light and other Native American people. So this, this kind of clicked that this was a solstice marking. But then the complexity grew with seeing that it marked winter solstice, equinox, and the lunar standstill cycle, which is an 18 and a half year cycle. So we were really, took years to study that. And then following that, we found that the Chaco buildings with their marvelous great long walls and hundreds of rooms when we did a survey with the National Geodetic Survey, they came out to be aligned to the same positions of the solar and lunar cycle that were creating the light markings. So the Chacoans' effort, it was a huge investment over probably um, several, maybe 200 years, maybe more, several generations. Pope sure. Benito, um, what's the possibility of that being a coincidence? Well, you can see the cluster of lines is so dense but again, if you were to gather, gather up these, these pebbles and throw them in the center of the circle at random, you would every single time get something aligned along the line of, of minor standstill. GV, we've been hearing a lot about the sun dagger, about its pertinence to the buildings at Chaco. Do you have a, an opinion about this? I mean, these are a lot of questions, correct? Oh yeah, the, the, that's some. Of, these are some of the seminal questions in regarding uh, archaeoastronomy and and how it all fits into the ancient culture. The truth is, uh, e for every assertion, there's somebody who will tell you exactly the opposite. As an interpreter, that makes it exciting. Dr. Malville said a few moments ago that uh, the uh, buildings up on uh, Fajardo Butte are obviously from a later period. Well, that's not agreement on that. The very archaeologist who works on staff and is a, is a part of the Chaco community believes, as I do, that they are core and veneer masonry, which puts them earlier than the Mesa Verdean. And he says that there's Mesa Verdean uh, uh, um, pieces of pottery up there, pot shirts, and that's true. But there's the entire range temporally speaking, of all of the pottery that's ever been found in Chaco up there. So, you know, he might be right, uh, he might not be. There's no proof, absolutely, at this point. So we just go on from here? That's right. All right. We just keep on going. Keep on keeping on. That's the game. It's great fun. Okay. Hi, 
how are you doing? Hi. So what brings you to you to the Archaeo Astronomy Conference? Well, actually, I'm an astronomy undergraduate, research experience for undergraduates um, intern at Lowell Observatory, uh, studying comets over the summer, and we thought it would be interesting and enlightening to study uh, ancient astronomy just for the weekend. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Florida, Melbourne, Florida. So, but you're here in the Southwest for some time? Yeah, for about 10 weeks. It's a 10-week internship program to learn about astronomy. So uh, how are you finding the conference? Uh, pretty interesting. It's, it's a little different than what we're uh, used to because we're basically hard scientists, but um, now we get to sort of fuse that with some cultural um, aspects of the culture here in the Southwest. So, and uh, how about you? Um, I'm also a summer intern at uh, Lowell Observatory, and I've always been interested in archaeology, so this is a great opportunity to see the two together. What do you do as an intern? Um, I'm working at Northern Arizona University and studying cryogenic ices, so they're similar to things that are found out past the orbits of Neptune and Pluto. So is this uh, pertinent to your studies, this, this kind of conference? It's interesting to see the development of a scientific process, so cultures that existed multiple thousands of years ago, and the first understandings of you know, the um, ecliptic plane and cycles that occurred with the sun and the moon. So it's not exactly relevant to what I'm doing now, but it's still an interesting process to see where the scientific ideas started and what they've developed into since then.